Hi guys, welcome to Love Room. My name is Rebecca. I'm from Chile and I'm a content creator on TikTok. I promote Korean artists that are very underrated on the Korean hip hop scene. So this is the main goal of this podcast to show you more underrated Korean artists for you to listen and for you, of course, to have more taste. So this is going to be Love Room. Hope you like it. Hope you comment, like and subscribe and share this podcast with everybody that you know and every uh, Korean hip hop lover. We are going to have our very first guest. And today's episode is about Danny Deck, that is a friend of mine. Um, he does music. He is very smart. He's a really cool guy. So just listen to the interview and see you on the next episode, of course. So this is Love Room. As you can see on the screen, um, we have our very first guest. His name is Danny. Um, his stage name is pronounced uh, Danny Tech. We are Thanks. going to discuss that after. But you can call him Danny. Uh, and Donny, just Danny. Uh, it's easier for everybody here. And um, long story short, why is Danny the first guest of Lock room and it's because um i really like his music he's the very first artist that has like mm, bone with me uh like a friendship level and i really 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 genuinely like his music and i just want everybody that is listening or watching this podcast um to go listen to danny even after like you finish this just go and listen to danny he's Amazing. He has like, um, well, I think the 2023 Danny is going to be um, different from the Danny that I know. And I was afraid of it. Like, am I going to like this Danny? But um, he sent me like a spoiler of his next song. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's going to be okay. I'm going to like him regardless. <laughs> Please, Danny, introduce yourself. All right. What up, everyone? It's your boy, Danny Dick. I'm so, so honored to be the first guest of Lock Room, which is the most popular <laughs> most popular podcast of the world. And uh, to introduce myself, I go by the name, name of Danny Dick, D-M-Y-D-K, or Danny, whatever. I'm a hip-hop and R&B musician based in Seoul, Korea. Thank you for having me, Rebek. Thank you for coming and thank you for saying yes. I was afraid to like DM you like, what if he says no? What if he doesn't want to? <laughs> so um, the first section we were going to talk about why getting the stage name of Danny Deck. Mm -hmm. Because um, the English speakers of this podcast uh, might hear it like, okay, Danny Deck. And it's kind of confusing. But for the Spanish speakers, o sea, si ustedes lo ven, lo escuchan, no, no van a um, pensar nada malo, pero en inglés suena diferente. So, why is Danny Deck? Can you, like, break it down for us? Okay, let's go back to 2011, when I first came up with the name, when I was barely 12. All right, uh, you gotta read it, Danny Deck. It's spelled D-N-Y-D-K, but you gotta read it, Danny Deck. Um, I know what, what you might be thinking, but I'll tell you what it is, okay? Danny is my English name. Um, I got from my mother when I was young, and the big part, D-Y-K, is my Korean initials. Uh, my name is Dong Yun Kim, so D-Y-K, I just read it right away. And I just wanted to put them together, the, the English name and Korean name. So I just... Spelled it like DMYDK. I was a little innocent guy who had no idea about what the word would sound like back in the day. Many have told me that my name sounds really sexual and funny at the same time. And some had made me made a lot of fun of my name. But I got so much love into my name. So so I'm still stuck, stuck with it. Uh, at first, I read it as like DMYDK. And in the first TikTok that I made uh, about Danny, because I'm that uh, into this, like 
I'm going to die <laughs> loving his music. I did a few TikTok about him and I was like, yeah, it's Danny uh, DNYDK. And then he was like, so it's not. Uh, it's Danny Deck. And I was like, okay, uh, I made a mistake. So for everyone, everyone wondering, it is Danny Deck. You might think, but where is Danny? Uh, is there any label behind him? And it's, yes, his very own label that he made with his friends. There's Me Merme. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but uh, in Spanish, I just read like Me Merme. Mm -hmm. And there's another guy that has like, um, tiene una cara de modelo. He has like a model face. Yes. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it, but in it's Spanish, you. it's we. You? You. You. Okay, so we're introducing like his label mates. There's Memer Man, um, you, mm -hmm. and Skywalker. Yes, yeah, Skywalker. Right? Skywalker. Um, and I don't remember the other ones. I'm so sorry if everybody's or anybody's watching this. Um, can you like introduce the other members uh, of Lover Size? All right, uh, Lover Size. We have a. Uh... We have nine nine people in it, and we have Skywalker, Yes Q, and Murmur Me. It's Murmur Me. It's Murmur Me. Murmur Me. Oh, yeah, Murmur Me. Murmur Me. Okay. And Derek, who's gonna drop a new Derek. single next month with me, as Dirty Lemon, and No Type Boy, who's a really good producer, and Yongta, he's from China. He's Chinese guy doing mm -hmm. Chinese rap. And we have Pine Nine, who is a visual director. He do a lot of videos and all the visuals we are putting out from the from the crew, lover side. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, there's nine guys on lover size. It is like a friendly uh, label as of now. As of now. And then we had, you guys had like a whole album um, made by all of you. Really good album, to be honest, but we are focusing now on Danny. And in 2020, he released Watch Away. And then uh, he released his very first album that is called Waves Aren't Afraid of Falling. And what I really want to talk about that a lot of people really notice about you that is a lover's eyes and this very first album start with a single that is all music that i think the very first time that i like dm'd you i was i told him like i really like uh those singles that it that are very sad and like sentimental and makes like an atmosphere like te dan una atmosfera es realmente genial y que lo yo digo como cuática porque la encuentro como demasiado genial y sí and he was like <laughs> and he was like yeah like I just wanted to put it but I want to know why you start um these two albums with this particular single because not not a lot of artists like do these kind of things alright the songs Rebecca might be talking about it is dancing walls in the rain and then saying walls in the forest um, th those songs are just uh, piano instrumental songs and the whole idea of it was this I always loved the love the album starting with the intro track it's, it's kind of traditional way to to depict uh, to start off an album and I really wanted to accept that and continue that the value of the intro intro. So both of the albums starts with an intro of piano melodies and both of them are walls. And I have never learned how to play piano but but one day in front of the keyboard I, I came up with the chord progression in the walls rhythm. That's how I started the whole idea of an album. That's always like when I start an album, I start with a just a rough sketch of piano melodies, and of course for the next album, next my next solo album of mine called "Happy Ones Never Check the Time" is is the album name that will be coming out about 
winter or next year. I don't know. I don't know exactly how the things will go out, but the happy ones never check the time. 행복한 사람은 시계를 보지 않는다. The new album might be. It will be. Starting with an instrumental song at the front. When I I was listening to Danny last year, I was like, so why is he not putting out more music? Like I was really worried about that. And he told me like, so yeah, I'm like kind of finishing my military service. Um, if you don't know, of course you're going to know because you are here because you love Korean hip hop, and it's because um all Korean men um have uh this duty to serve the country. So I want to know how serving affected um, your music and the kind of uh, you see yourself right now or your surrounding. What happened during um, that almost two years that you were like serving the country and doing like military stuff? Yeah, for 21 months straight, I had to serve for the government uh, uh, because I had asthma. So I couldn't serve for the military. So I have to serve for uh, 21 months for the food bank, which is a welfare center here in in Korea. Um, and that gave me a long, long kind of career discontinuity. I had to work for for like nine to six every day. And I couldn't do anything as a musician. I'm totally restricted to do kind of stuff. So uh, I had to find something else to improve myself. I'm kind of a guy who who always have to struggle and have to work hard. And so not as a musician, I could do many things. I I find out to, to read a lot of books about marketing and humanities and meeting with other artists. Uh, like uh, from other fields, like visual directors, producers, or in instrumental players. I got to do that and I could work out for myself at the gym. And eventually the time of 21 months, it gave me a space of time to to improve myself uh, for uh, self-improvement. So military service was like a reflecting time for you? Yeah, Can we it was, say uh, that? totally totally self-reflection and kind of a refreshing but exhausting refreshing. at the same time yeah um i don't know if you wanna uh, like touch this topic but i just remember that you were like studying like um something about biology yeah or biology I, I i major in biology in college like can you believe that like he makes music and he's he has the brain to study bio biology in English. Like, I, I don't know why. Like, did you always like like the feel or... Um, I, I want to know. Like, in the first place, when I was in the high school, I had to decide if whether I would go to the college or I could do much more spend more time as a musician i had to decide that when i was in high school and and one day i told my parents that i would not go to college and i i'll do some music business and they were like no that's not gonna happen that's not gonna happen in my family that's how things work in in korean society going to college is a was a is a huge huge deal you have to go to university to get a job. If you're like like ninety percent of of the students in high school uh, go to university, that's how that's what happens in in Korea. And I had to go to the college, and I made a promise with my parents that if I can I could go to a good college. If I get accepted into a good college, then they will give give a little chance to do something as a musician. That's why I studied hard in high school. I got to go to a good kind of university. And so you can I say this because I think I remember like the the name of the 
university. Yeah. It was John Yonsei? Yeah, it's Yon Yonsei. It's Yonsei and it's kind of a Ivy League, one of the yeah. university in the Ivy League in Korea. You are going to debut in a duo that is called Dirty Lemon. Yeah. With Derek. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you already like did like a um, snack peek with uh, a song that you launched uh, like a few days ago, um, and sounds um, not like uh, Danny Deck, not like the Danny Deck that we know. It's more like from for the summer for festivals. Um, why why getting into this um, not Danny Deck music that? we know as of now all right um like during the 20 months of career discontinuity i i reflected a lot of myself about my music and my career and uh, like when i i listen to my music my own music a lot and sometimes you know i want to turn up and be <laughs> I'm I'm a party kind of person. I'm I'm a really uh, I'm I'm a real really um, I have that kind of energy too. But if, even though I do some romantic, soft, and deep kind of music that I had done, or for the last years, but I also have that kind of spirit that, like I, I also love clubbing. I love partying, and I love, I love meeting with people, and I really like doing those kind of stuff. And I, like, when I look at my discography, and I couldn't find one that, who, that I can perform on stages and turn it up. So this was the whole start of the, the project, and. As Dirty Lemon, I'm gonna do do some kind of stuff that you can dance dance on, and you can sing along together, and I can go mad on stages. That's that's the whole point. They are going to give us a lot of um, fun and good music, and of course, um, on July or June or in a few weeks more, um, Danny and Derek are going to release their very first single. So let's hear about what Danny wants to say right now right, about uh, Dirty Lemon. Uh, Dirty Lemon is a hip hop R&B duo consisting me and Derek, which is a member of Lover Size. Uh, Derek is a popular songwriter in this local scene. He's now debuting as a rapper. It's, it, it is his first song as himself. And, um, you know, uh, there are well-known cases of songwriters debuting as a singer or a rapper like Frank Ocean or Bruno Mars, and he's the one of those cases. In Dirty Lemon, I want to talk about why this is called Dirty Lemon. It's like, we keep it dirty and juicy. It's our slogan. The songs with dirty lyrics and juicy vibes and sensual ways of expressions in R&B style. And one of those songs you might want to hear while having sex. Yeah. Okay. And we are <laughs> we are dropping brand new single of True Tracks in July, and so on and so on and so on. And so stay tuned. We are dropping banger this summer. How many songs uh, do you have in stock right now? In stock. Yeah. I don't know how uh, how many songs we will put out but we have like like tens of songs like like 50 songs we worked in this album for more than two years it's finally coming out we have like 50 songs and we are dropping just two in july just two why 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 are you doing that to us like just Give it everything to people. We can, yeah. <laughs> Where are you keeping those masterpieces to yourself? <laughs> now these, now these music videos are more much bigger than the songs. So we have to work on some visuals, and also we have to put it on a market as a as a brand and all things. So we will be. 
dropping more and more if you like it if you listen to it a lot you see if you if you spend a lot of time with our songs then we will be playing out more and more and more so and so I remember one time when I was in Korea that it was on cake shop that it's if for people that don't know what cake shop is it's a really like emblematic like um discoteca and I went to see um at the time it was like the sign here um contestants like the one that didn't make it to on AMG and it was um Tommy Choi Maddox and I don't remember the oh and part-time cooks mm -hmm. yeah those guys and part-time cooks have has like the music that Danny wants to make like hey let's party and stuff like that but then was like Maddox and I don't know if you know Maddox or yeah, not I know but <laughs> Maddox does um this deep and he sings on G5 um tone and it was in a club <laughs> And I was like almost crying. So I do understand like that you want to do um kind of music that people can turn up. Um but it's I don't know. Maybe in the future when we can say that um Danny is more like uh famous, you can do a, like a concert, like maybe the first part is going to be like romantic and sad and the other one is like, okay, let's turn this shit up, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, why do you know Maddox? Big yeah, fan yeah. of the program, the the TV show. Oh, yeah. You saw sign here. Yes. Who was your pick? I'm going to show. You, I'm going to judge you based on this. All one. right, my pick was Mello. <gasps> That's why I like you. You know, like, yeah, like my pick was either Maddox or Mello. It was like, please, and it. It was so Maddox and Melo on the top three finals. And I was like, I'm going to be okay, whoever it is. What do you think about Korean hip hop? Because when I say to people like, hey, I listen to Korean hip hop. And they are like, okay, show me. I'm like, what am I going to show them? Like the hip hop that they think that it's hip hop or like the Korean hip hop? What? Why do you think like Korean hip hop is that special? for like the fans. I don't think um, hip hop is ju not just a genre, but a cultural phenomenon. It's more like a lifestyle. I grew up listening to same rappers like like J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, Tupac. I'm, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar and, and Post Mello. And this culture is about personal background and self-expression, I think, hip-hop. And when it comes to Korean hip-hop, it is more like, more about cultural appreciation. Like, learning from the, the African-American culture is, it is very important to, for us to know the history and appreciate the culture. But I think what makes K hip hop, what makes Korean hip hop different from the Western is it is it still is included in K pop industry. So what K pop industry puts on the market, what K pop industry um, puts first on the charts really influences the Korean hip hop as well. So that's why when you think of K hip hop, uh, the mainstream ones, the you might be thinking of J Park and AOMG st style or the you will know style like Dean and Taber or those kind of mellow type of rap songs are really popular here in lo local markets. So that's why uh, you might think the first one you might think is mellow type of love songs in hip hop sound. I was totally ignorant about this. I, I didn't know. I really didn't know. I was just a small musician who does my own music in my basement in Hongdae in Seoul. And 
the first time I got I got the news about like this much of people are listening to my music and back then I was like because oh my god like sometimes I mean back then the first time when people started to listen to my music from all around the world it was really surreal it was unrealistic it was really um why are people listening to my music <laughs> and and i love it and i love it so much i love i had the thirst you know all the all the musicians and the artists are thirsty about getting acknowledged and getting the recognition from a lot of people like not a lot of people but getting recognition from people is is a huge deal and and the most most important part that the most important part is that you're connected via music it's really huge it's really really huge what i say what i what i talk about what i sing the reach you and made made you to feel the same feeling it's really really huge to me it means a lot to me Sincero. I remember I'm going to expose my coworkers because as I already said, like I work for Light of K and I didn't know that um, there was one girl that knew you. I was like, hey guys, like um, Danny is going to be like the very first guest. And she was like, wait, do you know Danny? And I'm like, yeah, of course, like I have taste. Of course, I know Danny. And she was like, I love that guy. Like, what the heck? And then I sent your video that you record in Jeju. Yes. And <laughs> all the people, like, there's like 20 people on that group chat. And that 20 people were like, why is he making me feel shy? <laughs> like, everyone, <laughs> everyone was like, okay, so she loud. Why is he making me nervous? And I was like, I was like okay. Chill out. First of all, chill out. He's my friend. Don't be that to him. He's a baby, though. Because if you don't know, like, I'm older. I'm older than, than, than this guy. For, like, a year, but I'm older. All that, That's all that matters. So everyone was like, why is he like that? Because you record that video and you were, like, um, feeling yourself. Like, you you were like, um, yeah, I'm Diddy, I'm Diddy Lemon. Like, I'm getting spicy. And everywhere we're like, hmm, this guy's making me feel things. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, personally, I really like music in which atmospheres are felt or that are capable of creating one. Can we stop for a second, like, for a minute? Personally, I really like music in which atmospheres are felt or that are capable of creating one. And that the artist through his music takes you into his world and allows you to create yours. I found that in Danny Dick. So I would like to ask Danny Dick, uh, what is the setting of your next album? Okay. If there are any feelings or feelings that he would like to convey and how he expects us to feel when listening to his music. Okay, this is the question of my next album, next solo album, yeah. The next solo album, the name of it, the name of it is Happy Ones Never Check The Time, the sentence. Um, you know, if we are so, so happy and way too happy that we are not really feeling the time. We don't have to check the time. And we are, if we are having a good time, then we don't have to check our wrist to check what time it is. Because, you know, we are so into that kind of situations, right? So that's the whole point of that album. I wanted to, though, I wanted to talk about what kind of happiness I get from my life and what kind of positive feelings that I get from uh, these years nowadays. And that's the whole point, how 
what kind of happiness I get. The if uh, the 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 last album called "Waves Aren't Afraid of Falling" was was about me dealing with depression and feeling love in more more more, more general meaning, general meaning of love, which is much universal that uh, parents and uh, si parents and offspring spring, love between parents and offspring and love between friends and friends and love between me and art, me and my music. Um, by the way, uh, on the other hand, this new album is going to be about the happiness and the good feelings that I'm feeling in my life. Are you happy these days? Mm -hmm. Am I happy? Are you happy these days? Yeah. I'm really, really happy that now I am really seizing the moment. Really, I'm living the moment. That's why I feel happy. I'm, I know, you know, there are painful days and painful times that I feel still get depressed and that where I need some medical help. But, you know, it's really happy that I'm dealing with it really quite, quite in a good way. And I'm really accepting it. The highs and lows of life, I'm totally accepting it. That's why I'm happy. Last time we talked about mental health, uh, neither of us was like, okay, so it's good that uh, you are getting better with time. The next part, um, I told you that I was going to make you choose between two things and that now you're going to see it. And of course, I'm going to judge you based on the ones that you choose. And maybe our friendship is going to end if you choose the wrong ones. <laughs> Yeah. It's not going to end. I'm nervous. I, I don't want to end this friendship yeah. forever. <laughs> I'm nervous. What is it, Wunde? You're stuck with me, though. So it's okay. Okay. This or that. It's going to be fast. Like, you need to choose in between five <laughs> seconds. So, The Purge by Higher Music or Indigo by Indigo Music? The Purge. The Purge? Okay. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. Okay. Crutch or Dean? Dean. Okay, okay. Young G or your signs? Young G. <gasps> uh, we, we are ending this, you know? <laughs> okay, next one. Samuel or Sire Park? Samuel. Choose wisely. Samuel. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Okay, oh, I have a last one. That it's singing or rapping? Ah, uh, tough, tough, tough. Come on, you need to like choose. Like, if I like the situation is this: if I choose singing, I I can. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You need to All choose right. one. <laughs> you need to choose singing. one. Oh my god! Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. Those are good choices. Oh, uh, I feel relieved that. <laughs> I feel so relieved that our friendship didn't end this time. I'm going to say something right. in Chilean and you need to guess All right. what it is. I'm going to say with the Chilean uh -huh. tone. Okay, so it is something that um, people say to kids. Um, to okay. kids. Okay. Okay, it is. I'm going to say your name, like, Dani, entrate pa dentro. Dani, entrate pa dentro. <laughs> entrate pa dentro. I'm sorry. <laughs> so when kids play outside, uh, the mom or the dad is going to be like, entrate pa dentro. But it's, it's, it's wrong to say it because... Ah, uh, dentrate, it is like uh -huh. get inside and adentro. Oh, done. How was that? How was that? How was that? He's done. 
Hyuna. Hyuna. Yeah. You're crazy about Hyuna. <sighs> yeah, I know. Okay, so that was everything for me and from Danny Deck. I hope you enjoy all the interview, the cockroach, and any last words for the people. Who's your boy, Danny Deck? I know life can be tough. Life might frustrate you at some time, but you know, with music, we're connected, we're together. The the most important mm. lesson that uh, music gave me is that we are not alone. You you're not the only you're not the only one who is feeling that way. And if we feel happy, we can share that with music. And if we feel depressed, we can just make them go away with the music. So that's what I'm trying to do. And stay tuned. It was Danny. <laughs> Okay, so that was everything for the interview. Thank you to Danny and the cockroach <laughs> and Derek that was trying to kill yes. the cockroach. Um, and stay tuned because he's uh, launching a Daddy Lemon. He He's going to make a hit. He's going to make it big. That, that's it. Um, so that was for everything on Log Room. And see you right, in two weeks. In two weeks. Adios. Bye. Adios. 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 <laughs>